I own my Trek Slash 9.8 from January 2022 to September 2022. It was a great bike to follow up my evil reckoning. I noticed some differences immediately, but I was more surprised at how similar the bikes were. Huh. The Trek Slash is getting a bit long in the tooth, but when it was released in 2021, it was right in line with the best bikes at the time. I was riding the Evil Reckoning in a large at that time, and the medium large Trek Slash was extremely similar, based on the numbers I thought I should be looking for. Both bikes had a reach of around 470 to 475, and both bikes ran a head angle around 64 to 64.5 degrees. The effective seat tube was the last thing that was similar, and that was 75.6 to 76.3. These were the numbers most talked about at the time, and the first things I looked for. As you may know, chainstay length has become more of a talking point as well, and while the Evil still is one of the shortest on the market at 430, the Trex 435 is short compared to enduro bikes from Specialized in Transition. After a few rides, I noticed something was off. It did not take much to recognize the front end of the Trek was much lower. The Evil did come with 35mm rise bars, but that wasn't all. The Trex head tube was actually more than 20mm short. I swapped some parts out and it helped, but if you're a taller rider or looking for a higher stack height, it may be an issue. The Geo doesn't trend too far in any direction, and it makes it a great choice not just for the Enduro World Series and bike parks, but also for riding mellower trails fast. We'll start with climbing. Compared to the Evil, the Trek climbed well. They both did the job without fuss and had traction to claw up any trail. The downside for technical climbing was clearly the effective seat tube angle. I would not say the slash climbs bad, and compared to some shorter travel bikes from just a few years back, it's outstanding. But compared to the newest stuff on the market, it's pretty obvious that this will be an area they look to improve. Let's get into the fun stuff. For pure traction, I would have to say the Evil had the edge, but a coil shock on the track may have muted that point. Once things got fast and flowing, I'm not sure I could perceive an edge to either bike. The Slash smashed rocks in Moab and slabs in Bellingham. The Trek, like the Reckoning, loved to get off the ground. Both bikes, for what I like to ride, kept craving more. After a summer on the Slash and multiple trips north of the border, including the Whistler Bike Park, I can confidently say the Trek Slash is a solid companion that's got your back. The good. The stiff frame delivers precise steering and a predictable feel when blasting jumps. It's nimble for a bike with big wheels and this much travel. I have to mention the in-frame storage. It's more usable than I thought, and after moving on from the slash, I want it back. The bad. It'll depend on the rider, but there wasn't much bad to speak of. I'm sure it's coming, but the slash definitely needs a steeper seat tube. I'm also tired of manufacturers not specking their bikes with 200 millimeter rear rotors. It may make sense for smaller size bikes or less travel bikes, but when we're talking about 29 inch wheels and 160 mils of travel, can we just err on the side of braking performance? Lastly, as one of my long term test bikes, I had the Slash for a whole summer. While I don't expect an enduro bike to hold up to a summer in the bike park like a DH bike, I did crack a rock link which is disappointing as this was the first broken frame in a couple seasons. Bikes fail, but the measure of a company is often their warranty, and I had a new link before the weekend without fuss. Good job, Trek. So who's the Slash for? The Slash is gonna be a great option for the mid to elite level enduro racer or the weekend warrior looking to push their skills. There are bikes that may inspire more confidence on the chunkiest straight or steepest lines, but that doesn't mean the Slash is not capable of them. If you know you got it, then the Slash has got it. If you want to smash park laps, this bike loves jumping and roosting corner. If you want a bike that is capable of the gnarliest stuff you can find, but doesn't sacrifice on the fun, then the Slash is going to be a bike you can get along with. Please take a moment and subscribe to the channel. I have a bunch more reviews coming.